Social Issue Documentary How much potential is there for radical social change through documentary? A question to consider. How may we represent or speak about others without reducing them to stereotypes, pawns, or victims? Agency is a sociological construct. Agency refers to the thoughts and actions taken by people that express their individual power. Agency is the power people have to think for themselves and act in ways that shape their experiences and life's trajectories. This resource is in the weekly module on D2L. I suggest you read it to get an overview of this idea of agency. Karl Marx said, the working class cannot represent themselves. They must be represented. Social issue documentaries in the 1930s and 40s began with a nationalistic identity. They used expository mode, that booming voice of God, had a strong institutional influence, were often made by government agencies, and proposed that the government served the common good of the people. In the 1930s, Dr. Brian Winston spoke of Britain's romantic view of their working class subjects in social issue documentaries like Housing Problems, released in 1935. He said that they lacked agency, that these documentaries failed to see the worker as a change agent, and the worker was not on equal status with the filmmaker. Expository mode is most often associated with the documentary presentation of these early social issue documentaries in America, like The Plow That Broke the Plains and The River. There is an emphasis on verbal commentary and an argumentative logic. Documentarian Paré Lorenz, working in the 1930s in support of FDR's New Deal, makes the plow that broke the plains and the river, and helps to establish conventions in social issue documentary filmmaking with his patriotic films. In the late 1960s and 1970s, we'll see a shift away from the early institutional framework of social issue documentaries. Groups like Newsreel changed the point of view and representations to, we speak about us to you. Marginalized groups represented themselves, and this voice continues through the 1970s and into the 1980s. Harlan County, USA, directed by Barbara Koppel and released in 1997, wins the Academy Award for Best Documentary. Although Koppel was only 30 years old at the time of its release, she spent years chronicling the plight of striking coal miners in Kentucky. She does not reduce her subjects to victims. She puts her subjects and herself at the same status. You can watch the trailer for Harlan County, USA in the playlist on D2L. Another social issue documentarian who helped to change representation and voice in social issue documentaries is Marlon Riggs, a black filmmaker who worked in performative and reflexive modes. He explored representations of black people in the media and representations of gay men of color. You can view a scene from his documentary, Black Is, Black Ain't, in the playlist on D2L. Paris is Burning, released in 1990, will be screened in week eight. Paris is Burning uses a mix of observational and participatory mode to present the drag ball subculture in New York City. Redefining the political voice of documentary. In the golden age of social issue documentaries in Britain and America, 1930s through the mid 1960s, the political voice that's constructed is that of a national identity that America or the UK is a melting pot where everyone is equal. We'll see challenges to that in the late 1960s and 70s that this national identity structure is something that needs to change. In the 1970s and 1980s, identity politics gives a voice to suppressed minorities. In the 1990s up until the present day, 
documentarians start questioning the hazards of categories and identities. The evolving understanding of communities. Documentaries that address the politics of identity also question alliances among subcultures, groups, and movements. This labeling of a community can create a group identity and pride, but it also risks in producing a false sense of security or permanence. The Fog of War gives the personal perspective on social and political issues from the point of view of Robert McNamara. He's used to talk about a larger social issue. Nichols calls this the personal portrait documentary. This week's assigned documentary is Dark Days, directed by Mark Singer and released in the year 2000. Dark Days was shot in the mid-1990s. Singer lived with his subjects in the Freedom Tunnel in New York City. Dark Days is shot in 16mm black and white, and when Singer ran out of money, he was provided with free cameras and film. In Dark Days, you'll see the subjects creating a temporary community out of need. I'll go over the critical writing choices, but be sure to read the instructions in the syllabus. Choice one, conventionally, social issue documentaries are done in expository mode. Present a cause and effect and call to action. How is Dark Days different from a convention conventional social issue documentary? Consider the mode, the voice, and the rhetoric presented in the film. Or, choice two, the Plow That Broke the Plains and Dark Days are categorized as social issue documentaries. Compare and contrast the two films' presentation. What are the similarities? What are the differences? Consider the photography, the audio, music, voiceover, and the editing. I thank you so much for watching, and until next time, have a productive week.